Hello and welcome. This is Dan Brown with DB3D. I'm going to show you today how to create a rendering using a plugin in SketchUp called Podium. So in this example, uh, this is the final result uh, using a SketchUp model, which is some components, uh, an axon view, and then rendering this in Podium, and then lastly doing a little touch-up work in Photoshop. So let's just get started here. Uh, here's the SketchUp model. <clears throat> and just notice a few things. Um, it's just a really basic, simple model here, just door openings. I'm not adding too much detail into this. I just kind of want to show uh, the basic floor plan in this. And to set this up, because I want this to be an ax axonometric drawing here, uh, I'm just going to go to Camera, select Parallel Projection, so then we get that sort of flat look. You can click the isometric view here. See how that looks. And for me, that's actually uh, it doesn't have enough angle on it. It's actually too low. So I'll raise this up a little bit, just like that. Make sure we get the whole building in the viewport. And then next, I'm going to go to Plugins and go to Podium and click show. Now if you're not familiar with Podium, uh, it's a photorealistic render built right inside SketchUp. And the website for it is suplugins.com. So you can go there, you can actually trial, um, you know, download a trial of it. Uh, there's great forum and some gallery examples. But essentially, um, you have two options when you're using Podium. Uh, you can select a surface and either make it a light or select its reflection level. So if you really want to get these nice reflections off of some surfaces, um, you know, you can play around with the levels here. In this example, I'm actually not even going to touch any of the settings here. I'm just going to leave them blank uh, because the, the reflection levels are ready for just a quick model like this are pretty good. You do have some rendering options here, so you can select the render size. In this case, I'm going to use the viewport resolution. And I'm using a 1280 by 720 uh, setting here. Uh, for presets, there are a bunch of old presets as well as some new ones. I typically just use the quality setting, just a personal preference. Um, but you can play around with these to see the results. Uh, right now, let's just render a preview size just so you can get an idea what this looks like uh, pretty quickly and also how you can see how fast this renders so right now it's processing the geometry we'll do some anti-aliasing and then <clears throat> ray tracing and then it'll populate so this is pretty good it's going to be hard to see because it is small um, but it is a little light here and probably a little too dark here um, so then we can play with the light settings either by creating our own lights or actually using the shadows uh, developed in SketchUp and I'm gonna display those so you can see those on let's see what happens there now typically when I turn the shadows on the um, <clears throat> light levels become very bright and that's because of the detail section here these little sliders here so you can see how bright that's coming now what I'll do typically is lower this down so the light and dark level to about 10 or 11 and I know it doesn't look good you know directly in the SketchUp model but notice stop real quick and re-render um, but just notice what happens when you actually do uh, render this out the lighting levels will be a lot better <clears throat> a little bit softer as well so this looks pretty good um, still a little bright up front but the back is still um, a, a lot uh, not as dark so you know we can see that nice and well so I'm pretty happy with that let's select our render sizes the viewport 
and let's render that. Now this will take maybe a minute or two so while this is rendering I'm going to do a second step uh, onto this that I prefer doing. Uh, also it's nice to save a scene so save the scene if you ever need to go back to this exact view uh, it'll save all those settings. So while that's rendering uh, I'm going to go to the hidden line view and I'm going to export this out as a 2D graphic. Now I'm not going to export it out as a JPEG, but I'm going to export it out as an EPS file. Uh, e not really too sure what exactly EPS files are. I know they're used in Illustrator slightly, but essentially in Photoshop they, they come in as a, a lot cleaner line than um, you typically would do if you just export it out as a JPEG. And let's just label this hidden line. Click export. And let's export one more, but with x ray mode on. Or, excuse me, with uh, wireframe. So, this one here. Again, file export, 2D graphic. And let's call this wireframe. Now we'll jump into Photoshop and let's just open those images. Let me find it real quick. So we have our hidden line and wireframe. I'll just click open. It's going to give you a raster um, formatting. Just click OK. I just use whatever this default setting is. And same thing. Click OK. So here we have our two images. We're just waiting for the SketchUp image to finish, which it did. You can always click on the preview icon here and actually bring up this previewer that shows you exactly what's going to look like. And that's pretty good. Now all of these images save to a specific location from Podium. And I have mine set up uh, into my documents. So let's just open up that last previewed image. I actually set up a little folder here for myself. Alright, so we have all three images. Now we want to combine them. So let's use this one as our master. The um, wireframe, I'm just going to take the layer. So you can see that there. I'm going to take the layer, hold down shift, and drag it into the new layer. If you hold down shift, it's going to match up the exact viewport of your uh, new instance or your layer that you're trying to uh, place it in. You can do the same thing for this one. Hold down shift and just drag it in. <clears throat> so now in our setting image, it doesn't really look pretty yet. Let's rename these. This is the hidden line. And this one's the wireframe. So with the wireframe one, we're going to take the opacity and just bring this down. And I usually like the wireframe because in this case you can see through uh, the building and be able to see what some of that other uh, geometry is. Now obviously don't keep this too high, but you just want to show a little bit of that detail. So for me, 15% is a little strong. Let's bring this down a little bit more. That's pretty good at 9. So like that, how that looks. <clears throat> and then lastly, I'll just turn on the hidden line. And in this case, it's just going to give some more definition to the outer edges. So I don't want this at 100, but maybe, depending on how bright you like your settings, and I'll put this somewhere around 35 or 40. All I have to do then is just go to File, Save, and save this out as a JPEG.